Well, hello, you guys. Hey. Welcome back hey. to another episode of B&D Dad and Son with DM Dad, Sonny Boy, and Abigail um, to kind of round out the little group here. So what do we have planned tonight? Any guesses? We're going to be creating a dungeon. All right. Let me share my screen, okay? So what we're looking at here is the dungeon generator section of Greg Gillespie's Dragon Slayer RPG. Right, so um, we're going to be going through the steps that he has laid out. So he's kind of an expert uh, mega dungeon creator, right? So, and he's put this portion in his book where you can, you know, build out a dungeon, uh, kind of uh, Greg Gillespie style. So, which is really super awesome. It's it's a very cool uh, component of the product. So. Um, we're going to kind of build this out in the spirit of, um, you know, trying things out, but also um, uh, Greg has until April 30th on the Facebook page of uh, Dragon Slayer, a contest going on. So he's encouraging people to use this method uh, to build out a, uh, a, a dungeon and submit it, and guess what the winner gets? The winner gets all four, like hard copies of all four mega dungeons that uh, Greg Gillespie has on the market right now, and that's that's a huge value because that's uh, they're not cheap, and uh, you know to get all four of them, that's like um, we're talking like eighty dollars a piece, so you know. That's a lot of value. Four books times 80. What's that? $320 market value. So anyway, and, you know, it would be super fun. So, I mean, we already own all those, or at least I do. But, um, you know, it'd be cool for you kids to have your own version. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through the steps here. And we're going to um, use this Excel sheet to kind of... Uh, you know, create our dungeon, right? So we're going to kind of uh, use this to uh, to build things so, out. Go ahead, sweetie. Like, um, do we have to use only the shapes in the book or something? Or like, what's those? Yeah. So well, let's go through the steps. So, uh, step one: generate dungeon geomorphs so we'll roll a d12 to determine the total number of rooms in the dungeon and make a numbered list on scrap paper okay so i'm going to create a new sheet here this will be our numbered list all right so we'll call it this room number okay and i'm gonna roll on our d12 here using this roll dice app that sunny found let's go ahead and roll it three rooms okay that's good enough for now so then we got room number one room number two and room number three okay so the, there's a lot of sound someone's moving around is that you again abigail could be sorry that might be me just like squeaky surface yeah, careful there. All right, so um, the next thing, uh, the entrance is the first room in the dungeon. Roll a 1d8 on table one. Dungeon entrance geomorph. So that's this table right here that we're looking at, okay? So let's pull out our dice roller, and we'll click a d8, and then we'll click roll. Seven. Okay, so what we'll do... You see how we have number seven, so that's our entry. So why don't we take yeah, that's a, a cool entry? Yeah, let's take a little snippety do, snippety doo da. 
and uh, and and go like this. And then we'll take it over to our dungeon page and we'll kind of put it like that. That's cool. Something along those lines. Got three ways to go. Yeah. We'll we'll put it in the middle or something like that. Okay, cool. Um all right, next, determine the shape of the rest of your dungeon rooms. For each additional room after the entrance, roll a 1d8 on table two, dungeon room geomorphs. Okay, so let's go to table two. And it was a 1d8, so let's go ahead and roll a two. All right, let's grab it. I'm going to snippity doo dah one more time. My, oh my, what a wonderful dungeon. Where do you want this one to go, you guys? Um, I think that should be on the left. It looks like a left room. Yeah. Left room time. Alright, let's see. I just want to make those uh, roughly the same size. What do you say, Josh? Left room time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, let's uh, let's roll up the other one. Three. All right, let's check it out. We got a circle. Circle. Okay, let's. Uh, we're going to Circle K. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys should have seen the headline I saw the, the other day on YouTube. What did it say? Uh, someone was uh, bemoaning Circle K, discriminating uh, LGBTQ against LGBTQ hires because, guess why? Why? Because they screen out people who have <laughs> who have uh, uh, criminal records of crimes against children. <laughs> and so, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's... that's they that's, were criminals? Think, yeah, because they're dangerous to children, and so that's... Oh my gosh. It's nuts, you guys. It's a nuts, yeah. nuts old world we live in. All right, so this is. Uh, I'm going to. I wonder. Actually, let me. Um, let me take that snip again. I'm going to try and take it a little bit closer. To. Oh, just so you're not having like the extra stuff. Yeah. Okay. Try that. All right, let's make that bigger. Appropriate size. I think I made it too that big. That should be like a throne room or something. Or like one that's like super hard to get in. Good idea, sweetie. I don't think I really improved it. <laughs> it's fine. All right, let's uh, let's get our old one back. If we can. Is that the new one? There we go. All right, we're good. <laughs> okay. All right, good enough. All right, so let's see what's next. All right, so we've done step one, A, B, and C. Okay, so once the maze controller, that's us, determines the 
total number of rooms and their shape, she or he then draws each room on the worksheet, graph paper, all right, which we've done. Rotate the room geomorphs as desired. Okay. After all the rooms are mapped and numbered on the graph paper, the maze controller must draw hallways and join the rooms together. Oh, okay. Um, for the purpose of the generator, use 10 foot wide hallways. Um, maze controllers should include as many intersections as possible. I wish we had more rooms. To provide meaningful choices for players. Yeah, this is kind of a small little dungeon, isn't it? Okay, so. Yeah. Um, we need hallways. All right, so let's do that. Let's uh, let's build some hallways here. Where do you want this one to be? And this one. Um, I guess we can rotate these put two. That one, like the circle one. You should put that one all the way down on the right hand corner. Okay, like right here. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then we'll do like a hallway, like, um, let me see. Font number. I'm going to have to open this up. So what I want to do is borders. I'll do top border and bottom border there we go and then i'll do bottom border and then i'll do a side border make that a left and a right border do you guys see what i'm doing Oh, yeah, you just, like, yeah, except I fixing actually, up. Yeah, I kind of messed up, though. I uh, just want to make... There. I didn't want a border down here. So. Okay. Put that one there. We'll do a top border. And then we'll do another top and another bottom. We only have, like, three rooms, though. That's okay. It could be a little mini tomb or something. Yeah. All right. Need the hallways. What, what do you want? What should we do with this? Should we rotate it or something? Uh, yeah. We should Which turn way? it like all the way around. Like that. Yeah, right there. Okay. And then we can go. Bottom border, top border, and let's go left, right, and we'll need a top border now. Top. Get a bottom in there. Actually, let's undo that because we just need this for a bottom. Oops, ease, and then this will go like that. And then we'll go like that. And then I'm just going to expand this out. And then I think what I'll do, uh, let's see. I'll fill these in. Oh, like everything that's not a hallway is black? Yeah.
What do you think? Looks good. good. We should add like a bunch Don't of dead ends and stuff and make it like a maze. Yeah, we could. Oops. This will just be a simple build anyway tonight, you guys. So we're not going to be doing anything real crazy. Yeah. This is our first time I ever bet. doing this, so we're just can we're just kind of seeing how. It works around. So, yeah. All right. Cool. So we've got a bit of a shape here. All right. Uh, at the end of the generator, the maze controller may insert a secret door or two and adjoining passages where practical, practicable and appropriate to, uh, to the results and themes of the generator. Maze controller may also include interesting features to the map as desired. Okay. So step two, determine dungeon condition. So not all dungeons are dry. Roll this table to determine conditions. We need to roll a D6. Let's bring this over. And then we'll go D6 and roll it. Six. Okay. So this dungeon is flooded knee deep. Okay. Oh, That's wow. Good adventure in. Uh, step three, dungeon door type. Roll the door uh, type for each room and record your result on the worksheet. Okay, so we've got three rooms. So that's we're going to be rolling a d6 for each one. So we got a four, so that's wood. A two, that's wood. And a six, that's stone. So we've got wood, wood, and stone. So let's go to our other sheet here. And we'll go door. Type. Wood. Wood. Just got a cat. Stone. Oh, Sonny's got the kitten. I think in we there. should, got I the think we should make the there. circle one stone. Oh. Do you want to say something? Meow and little kitty. Yeah. yeah. I think Oops. Sunny loves having the kittens in there. I do. I love little kittens. They're the cutest. Well, if you want, you can take a second and, like, put them on camera. Maybe some of our viewers would like that. I mean, how else are we going to compete with uh, Pundit? Yeah, Pundit, you should right? do do that, Josh. All right, let me uh, let me uh, stop my share. There we go. Okay, do it again. Meow. Aww. <laughs> Look at that. Aww. Got another one. That's one of them. This Josh, show them all at the same time. That'll that'll be a little difficult, but okay. Well, what you do is you just turn your your. I gotta change my background real quick. Yeah, turn. Yeah, change your background to just a camera and like move it away from you, just toward the cats, and they can see them. There you go. Perfect. Oh, You're so okay. cute. Little tiny you kittens. Two oranges, a creamy, and a calico. Pretty hard to see. They're just kind of uh, bad lighting in there right now. But uh... Josh, turn your light up. <laughs> Here. There you go. Turn that light up. There you go. Aww. He's a vampire. <laughs> you gotta say, being a vampire wouldn't be half bad, especially for following D&D &D rules. <laughs> they get a lot of abilities. All right, cool. Let me... Reshare my screen, Sunny, so you can take those cats oh, off they're so camera. They're cute. Yeah, they are. All right, so we got our door types. So, um, so now we're going to go to step three A, dungeon door status. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll go. 
door status. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're going to roll a d6 again. Three times. So we got a six, which is sealed. That stone door. Or actually, let me, um, I'll do it down the line here. Or sealed. Okay. Oh, sealed again. Oh my gosh. This is going to be a tough dungeon. Okay. Roll it again. One. Closed. All right. All right. Sealed with wax if stone or rope not with seal if bronze. See the rules on doors earlier in the rule book. Okay, so we could go back and figure out the specifics about that. So step four, determine room contents. So you roll a D12. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Well, oops, sorry, this is D6. Let me get rid of that. Roll a D12. Three, empty with trap. Okay, so let's uh, let's make another column here. Room contents. Empty with trap. All right. Cool. So... Starting to come together for you, Abigail? Well, yeah. maze controller's choice. Okay, so what do you want to be in the room? Mm -hmm. So basically, does it have a trap? Is it empty? Does it have a monster? Does it have treasure? So any of those things, right? Seven. I think it should have treasure. treasure? We should go with the, the triple, the tres leches of both <laughs> punishment and reward. What, seven? Monster, treasure, and trap. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, and then let's roll for that room with the stone door, a two, which is empty with treasure. Oh. And, you know, if we wanted to, we could kind of mix these up. If we wanted the room with the stone door to be, you know, Fortified, then we could change these results around, you know, not a big deal. All right, step five, dungeon room unique features. If you rolled an 11 on step four, roll table five dungeon room unique features below and record your result. All right, but we didn't, so we'll just go to step six, determine monsters if applicable. All right, for each dungeon room contents that included a monster, uh, the maze controller rolls on table six, monsters. The monsters on the facing page are grouped roughly according to player character level and monster hit dice. A beginner maze controller should select levels one through three. Our experience is referees may choose the appropriate column for his or her campaign by level or randomly determine the monster present. All right, you guys, so do we want to do like a beginner dungeon? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to roll a d20. Okay. Get rid of that. Put a d20 in there. And let's roll it. 11. Gray ooze. All right. Let's pull that in. And let's put um, monster in here. Column for monster. Okay, I don't like how that's not aligned. All right, there we go. Okay. All right. Step seven, determine treasure. For each dungeon room contents that included treasure, maze controller begins by rolling table 7A treasure type. Okay, so let's find 7A. Did I miss it? 
It's right here. Yes. Okay. It was right in front of my face. All right. <laughs> so, all right. So let me go ahead and uh, I'll roll that on, on a D20. Let's roll three. Okay. So it's an amphora. I'm not sure what What's an amph amphora is. Let me find out. So empty with trap, empty with treasure. What's that? Treasure here. Um and Dora. Or I guess treasure type. Let me I'll I will figure that out in a second, sweetie. Treasure type. Alright, so Amphora. Well you will look that up here. Amphora. A tall ancient Greek or Roman jar with two handles and a narrow neck. Like that. First enemy we should be fighting in this dungeon oh, is pretty, a basilisk it, like, immediately. Or something? What did you say, Josh? Basilisk. First enemy we're fighting. <laughs> Make it an absolute meat grinder of a dungeon. Let's do. Let's. <laughs> well, I thought. Well, we rolled a gray ooze, so we're we were doing beginner. We rolled on levels one through three. So, and we rolled a, an 11, right? So let's roll um, for the th room three, right? For treasure, uh, 15. Okay, so let's check it out. So we go down here, and 15 is a gem. Okay. I don't know if it's a gem or gems or, or what, but that's the treasure type, okay? All right, so we've got treasures. We only have the one monster. Great. So let's see. Determine the treasure type. So we've done that. Determine the treasure value in gold pieces. That must be this table. Okay, so we'll roll a d12. All right, let's get rid of you. Let's roll you. A 10. All right. We'll call this treasure value. Is that like a good treasure value? Well, this is how much is it, right? So it's 400 gold pieces in value. Ooh. This, this M4, okay. And then let's roll for the gym. Seven. It's 300 gold piece value. So they're both like really, really good prizes. Yeah, that's not bad at all. But this one comes with some risk, huh? Okay. So we've done that. We've, we've rolled for value and uh, gold pieces. And determine if any treasures are of exceptional value. Okay, so that must be right here. Amphora type. Goblet type, jewelry type, gem type. Okay, so we have one of each of those. So let's roll our D6. Or wait, I, maybe I'm maybe I'm jumping the gun here. Um, let's see, determine if any treasures are of exceptional value, but we don't. Do we. We don't automatically roll on the exceptional value table, right? So I'm just wondering if, right, if exceptional, add the amount indicated on the appropriate subtable below. Okay, how do we determine if it's exceptional or not? Is there like a column that says how much it has to be to be exceptional? If each treasure, for each treasure, roll a 1d8. A roll of one indicates a treasure of exceptional value. There we go. Okay, great. So for each column, or sorry, for each treasure, roll a 1d8. So let's do that. Um, so I'm going to get rid of that, and then I'm going to throw in a d8. I'm going to roll that one uh, twice, once for each treasure. A seven. 
a three. Okay, so neither of them are of exceptional value, so we're good. So we can skip those tables. All right. Step eight, determining traps. So for each dungeon room contents that included a trap, the maze controller rolls on table eight. Trap type. Okay, so let's do that. We'll roll a d6 like it's asking us to. Roll it. Three. A missile trap. Okay. Call this trap type. Missile. Okay. And we'll roll that. One more time, because we have one more trap. A two. Melee. Oh, I wonder what that's going to be. Sounds like, uh, sounds like you fight something. So maybe the gray ooze will be the trap. You know what I mean? I don't know. Okay, so uh, we've got our trap type. So... Let's see. Now I think I do believe that we roll a d4 on the missile trap. Uh, what should I call this trap type? And then consult uh, the appropriate subtable. All right, so I'll call this trap subtype or something like that. All right, and the missile trap, let's roll a d4. A two, which means it's a crossbow bolt. All right, cool. that's well, really to get starting a to get dungeon. Yeah, it's really starting to come together, isn't it? And it's not hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and then we've got our yeah. melee. We'll roll on the melee table. Here, melee trap. Okay, we'll roll a d4. A three. Yeah. I, I guess the challenge is uh, to come up with a story that goes along with all this, right? So... Swinging ball, 1d6 points of damage, okay. What do they mean by story? Like, um, like why the person would want to go in the dungeon? Yeah, like, what's the purpose of the dungeon exactly? Why would you want to go in? Um, you know, what what the, uh, the nature of it kind of is, and, you know, just the reason for, for your characters going there, and what they'll get out of it if they do, I guess, like, as far as story goes and things like that like so we we already kind of have a lot of um what's going to be built we could put the like, dungeon, but like the, it's been a legend to go in there but nobody's ever come out of the dungeon before and so yeah. when we go in there and all the mod in they'll be uh playing like a hero, and get the treasure. You know what? Um, since, what's, what's an huh? amphora, what's an amphora used for? Is that some kind of burial thing? Uh, let's see. Hmm. Mythic period. What is an amphora used for? That's what I want to see. Sorry, let me go back. Oh, come on. Come on, internet. Work faster. What is an amphora used for? Amphoras were, were sometimes used as grave markers or as containers for funeral offerings or human remains. Right, so it is funerary. So mm -hmm. this, we should call this... Um, 
the crypt of the what? The Crypt of the Mad... I don't know. Crypt of the... Cursed... Conjurer? How's that? Yeah, it's good. Right, now, now we, let's change the font to something creepy. What's the creepy font called? Do you guys know? Uh, I know there's a uh, airy font. I don't know. Airy feels kind of scary. Because <laughs> it reminds you of school. <laughs> the default font scares me. <laughs> reminds me of doing work. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. yeah. Merryweather. <laughs> there we go. Got Show card gothic. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Okay, and then let's make the Ooh, that one scary. Yeah. Looks like a haunted house. And then we'll give this like uh yeah. Anyway, the crypt of the curse conjurer. There, cool. All right. What else? Is that it? Okay. So, uh, how you would do this is you would actually use this dungeon sheet so you would put you would build it out on there right and uh and then you would yeah. write all these details um in the sheets provided and submit it that way or you know something like that so oh that's cool so if, let's take a look and and see what we got here so we've got this is our room one this was our room two. This was our room three, right? So let's uh, let's go ahead and mark them. Um, I'm going to go font, and I'm going to go. This is room. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna make all the font within these areas red. I'm going to put a two here. This is a one, and then this is a three. So we got room one, two, and three. I'm gonna actually make those bold. Feel bad for people that might be watching this on a small screen or something. Uh, let's see, 13, and then we'll make it bold. Make it in the middle. There we go. One, two, and three. So in room one, we've got a wooden door. So maybe that's the entryway to the dungeon itself. And um, yeah. it's sealed. It's empty, but it's trapped. So the room is trapped, right? Uh, with a crossbow. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you go through the hallway to room two. And then room two has, it's sealed. There's a monster and a trap in there. There's great ooze in there. There's a swinging ball, and there's an amphora of the cursed conjurer worth 400 gold pieces. And then if you go to room three here, which has the, uh, which has the uh, <clears throat> round room, it's got a stone door, which is closed, and it's empty and has a gem inside. So that was simple, wasn't it? That was really easy to do, and like I, I can see having a lot of fun working through that, um, and yeah. getting the dungeon built out and in no time, flat. You know? Just having fun rolling dice, because even just rolling dice is fun. Here, so, let me. Uh, what is it? Wait, what about? monster? What was the monster? It yeah. was a uh, gray ooze. Oh. You know what gray ooze is? Um, maybe. All right. Well, just give me a second. I'm just going to throw this up in here. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, and then we'll make this like 30. No, that's too big. Okay. 
How's that? Ooh, looks awesome. All right, so let's go to our monster section in the book, and we'll see what's the deal with the gray ooze. So we'll go gray ooze. Is the great news in the monster manual? I wonder if it is. Oh, it just took a little while to load it, I guess. There it is. So, this is what a great ooze looks like. Just like that. It's an acidic slime that resembles a damp stone. Ventures often mistake it as such. And if this whole thing is like knee deep in water i think that would be really hard to spot so oh yeah that's a good good one for this one yeah cool oh <gasps> so they have a shark yeah you can get eaten by so a shark cute. yeah that's cute and this guy too he's getting uh he's getting pooped on by green slime and uh he, he looks like he's having a great time <laughs> oh yeah definitely <laughs> all right cool well you know what i think that's basically it did you guys wow. have fun yeah you guys want to try it yourself oh maybe yeah. yeah why don't you submit something for, for greg uh for his uh his uh contest see what you can get all right guys let me switch gears, All right. and we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.